Hello friends, in this session I'm going to take up the concept of deadlock in operating system. So, uh, what is a deadlock? Let's first of all get its basic meaning and then let's proceed into the details. So, as asked by one of the students, I'll be covering all the details of this topic. So, let's start with it. First of all, in case of deadlock, what we are going to imagine is, I'm going to show you a scenario. So, you need to imagine a scenario wherein you have a set of processes. Let's name the processes as, as P1, P2, P3, P4. And then you also have a certain set of resources. Obviously, processes actually are needing, are in need of some resources. And they also have a set of resources assigned to them already. What I mean to say is, a certain process, a certain process, let's say PI, may need a resource R1 and it already has a resource R2. So just imagine that kind of scenario. So you have the available set of resources as R1, R2, R3, R4 and available set of processes as P1, P2, P3, P4. And now what we have over here in this scenario is that P1 is assigned R1, R1 is assigned to P1 process and P1 is requesting for P R4, but R1 is assigned to P4, R4 is assigned to P4, and similarly P4 is requesting for R3, R3 is again assigned to P3, and P3 is requesting for R2, R2 is again assigned to P2, and P2 is requesting for R1. So in a way, you can see all these processes are actually requesting for some resources and they already have a set of resources which are being requested by some other process. So none of this, these processes will be able to complete at the end because if I say P1, if I want to complete P1, I'll have to provide it R4 and R1 both for a certain period of time so that it completes all its computation and then maybe I can change the <coughs> access of R1 and R2, R1 and R4 to some other process which are in need of it, right? So, uh, so currently I think it might have, uh, you might have uh, got the picture that what a deadlock is. It is basically a scenario in which a certain set of processes are waiting for a certain set of resources which are actually occupied by some other processes. So if I just define it clearly, it will be like, it is a situation when each process in a given set of processes, each process above in this set of processes, controls a resource that another process in the set has requested for. So it is controlling a, a resource which another process is requesting. For example, let's see this P2 process. So it is controlling R2 which is being requested by P3 and P2 is requesting for R1 which is being controlled by P1. So therefore we would say these processes are in deadlock. Okay. So the four necessary conditions for a deadlock to hold are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. So let's see each one of them what they actually mean. Mutual exclusion as it is very clear from its name, it says that each resource may be allocated to only one process at any instant, right? Each resource may be allocated to only one process at any instant. That means there will be no sharing of resource. There will be no sharing of resource. So what would have happened if there would have been allowed a sharing of resource? In that case, let's just again go back to this scenario. If, if I say that a sharing of resources is allowed over here, what would, what would have happened? Just imagine that this R1, if this would have been shared with both P1 and P2, they would have not been in deadlock so far, right? So that means, uh, that, uh, that is why we're saying these are the four necessary conditions for deadlock to hold. That is, if all these four conditions are holding, we can definitely say that, you know, the deadlock, cannot be avoided and if I make if I make so if I make any one of them false I can easily break the deadlock what I mean to say is let's say I'm 
remove this mutual exclusion constraint. So that means I allow sharing of resources. The above scenario of deadlock can be avoided easily. So we'll uh, discuss that also in detail shortly. But let's just first of all define these conditions. Next is hold and wait. What does hold and wait mean? Hold and wait actually means that a resource, a process is basically holding one of the resource and it is requesting or waiting for some other resource. So it means processes do not release previously granted resources while waiting for pending requests to be granted. So this is again the reason you can figure out from here P2 is holding R2 and it is waiting for R1. Suppose it would have release this R2 before requesting for R1, P3 wouldn't have been waiting so far. So P3 wouldn't have been in deadlock. So let's move on. Next is no preemption. What do we mean by no preemption now? No preemption means that previously granted resources may not be taken away from the processes holding them till they complete their task. Right? So previously granted resources do not may not be taken away from the processes holding them. So we cannot preempt the resources till a process completes its execution. So next and the final, uh, you can say the necessary condition is circular weight. So what is a circular weight? It basically means when the processes are waiting for in a, uh, waiting for resources in such a way that it forms some kind of cycle or something, which is exactly the similar uh, phenomena which is occurring over here. This is basically an example of circular weight, but let's discuss what it is. There exists a chain of two or more processes such that each process in the chain holds a resource requested by the next process in the chain. So uh, in this example, you can see that each process holds a resource which is requested by the next process, right? So. Having discussed this, in the next session, I'll be covering the deadlock handling techniques. So, uh, hope you would have got some uh, clarification of the concept of, of the basic concept of de in deadlocks. I can't say that I've done, I've uh, so far I've discussed enough of it, but yes, I'll be covering it in, in a while. So, stay tuned for more good work coming up. Thank you.